Hi, I'm Ginger Garner. I would like to do a demonstration where you can practice along with me of the seven locks. All you need is a mat and maybe a rug on top, if, especially if it bothers your knees or your hands to come uh, to be on the floor on a hard surface. The very first lock we're going to focus on is has to do with this area here and how the skull sits on top of the spine. What we're looking for is a little glide, a little 10 degree glide back and a 10 degree glide forward approximately. What we are going to focus on is just the forward part. And what should happen is this part of the cranium here, the occiput, should glide over the top of C1. That gives you a very important range, it's about 10 degrees that I mentioned, maybe 15 at the most, where you are able to just do this. Okay? You're able to nod the chin, and why is that important? Because it can offer up to 50% of your range of motion in your neck. So when someone comes in, they may have neck pain, headaches, shoulder pain, etc. I always check this area, and there's usually an issue there. So I'm going to teach you something that you can do to keep that cranium C1 area healthy and have less problems or less risk of issues in the neck. You're going to put one hand here at the base of your skull. And you're going to cover up this part here, C2. It's the first vertebrae you can feel. So cranium, C2. This hand is going to come and cover the rest of your vertebrae. Everything from below C2 to C7. Okay? So you're covering this whole area. Now what am I doing? I am only gliding. So a little tiny mo motion here. It's almost like you're a turtle. It's almost like you're a turtle pulling your head back in your shell. See how small that is? That is called what I call a mild chin lock. So this is kind of version 2.0 of yoga. This is taking the old lock system, which wasn't based in science at all, and applying science to it to make it therapeutic. That is your first lock, cranium C1. We're going to put all these locks together in just a moment. The next lock is your shoulder lock. Now, there is a lot more muscles than is f focused on and uh, pictured here in this little model. Okay, this shows basically your rotator cuff and a few other things. But there's a whole uh, mass of awesome muscles here on the scapula that help stabilize and move the scapula in concert with the shoulder, okay, with this arm bone. I teach something called a shoulder lo a lock in yoga because... It allows you to take and put the humeral head in an ideal position in the shoulder joint. And who doesn't want that, right? So we'll start with the hands out to the side. The face, I'm going to call this the face of the elbow, is up. That means this upper arm bone is rotated and kind of a screw home mechanism to get it back in the joint where it's supposed to be. And then the palms turn down. And that's it. This is called an arm spiral. If this derotates, then I've lost my arm spiral. So you want to maintain your arm spiral, palms down, and then you're going to flutter your wrists, I don't know, like they're butterflies or something, right? While maintaining elbow up. If you get any numbness, tingling, changes in sensation, it should immediately go away when you stop. If it doesn't, go find your local friendly PT and they'll help you out with that. That's usually easily solved okay, without drugs and surgery, right? That's what we want. Now, if you don't feel any numbness, tingling, changes in sensation, fabulous. Okay. You might feel them through the first three fingers. That's our median nerve. Go a little higher. You might feel it. So you're kind of flossing the nerve, mobilizing the nerve, while maintaining your arm spiral and your shoulder lock. Then you can go a little higher. This is as high as we'll go with this. And now... That brings us to a position where if I bring my hands forward and I'm maintaining this arm spiral, it seats the head of the, the arm bone here where it should be. I can do this in what's called an open chain position, an open kinetic chain here, or hands to the ground here. That's your shoulder lock position. It engages these muscles so you get a slight depression of the shoulders while maintaining your arm spiral. Notice when my elbow is up like this, my hands are out. 
That means when you're doing downward dog or a number of poses, you need to have the hands turned slightly out in order to protect this area of the wrist. Okay. That's your shoulder lock. And again, we're going to put all these together in a minute. The next one is three locks combined, abdominal and then front and back root lock. Uddiyanda Bandha, Mula Bandha, which you probably heard of, and Ashpani Mudra. Ashpani Mudra. So that's three locks combined. I put all those together in something called TATD breath. That's transversus abdominis assisted thoracodiaphragmatic breath. That's a mouthful, and you don't need to remember any of that. In fact, you don't even really need to remember TATD breath. You can just say power breath. The difference is, as you inhale, a regular belly breath allows the abdomen to expand and then return to steady state. Notice when I'm doing that, my rib cage doesn't move that much. I can take a nice full belly breath, no problem. But what if I needed to lift something heavy? Then I might need to use my pelvic floor and research tells us when we coordinate the effort of that transversus with the pelvic floor, we get better postural stability and control and it's more sustainable for us and we're less likely to get hurt. So now with fingers on my ribs, I'm gonna demonstrate that, that next, the next three locks together. So watch the rib cage, that's where all the action happens. I'll do a diaphragmatic breath first. Not much happens with the rib cage. Now I'm gonna watch my waist draw in a little smaller. I activate that transversus. I pick up my pelvic floor a little bit. Now I'm gonna inhale. See the difference? There's a lot there's a lot of difference here with the expansion out to the side of the rib cage, like that. Now there are some tricks to getting this to flip on without having to be so conscious and of the voluntary effort, because this one's hard to coordinate all three locks. That can take weeks and weeks. And I'm trying to teach you this in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna give you a little brain trick here, little hacks into doing this without having to think about it. It's called a downward dog prep. That brings the last lock into the situation, the hip lock. The hip lock takes the deep muscles that really attach the leg bone onto the pelvis and then run into the pelvic floor. So it, it actually synergistically brings all those things together, which is like when you put them all together, it's a really cool party trick, okay? When you get the hip lock going, the pelvic floor, your power breath, your, your shoulder lock and your chin lock. You can put all of them together in this nifty little trick called down dog prep. Find your arm spiral, elbow up, upper arm bone externally rotated, palms down, wrists up, slightly turned out because that's a natural position to be in. Contact the floor, bring the shoulders right over the wrists, bring the knees right under the hips. Now watch what happens when I redo my arm spiral. So I redo my arm spiral, my hands turn out a little, shoulders away from the ears. I'm gonna turn my toes under, lift my knees an inch. That kicks all of your locks in. If you have any pain here, that would be a great time to see a PT who can evaluate what of your locks are not working. Because you should eventually be able to shift your weight. Now, I'm actually talking during this, which means I have to be doing it right because usually people will breath hold with this, right? And we don't want to breath hold. So you just want to be able to glide back and forth, test all of your ranges, breathing smoothly, sing a song if you feel like it. I'm joking, but you could actually if you wanted to. And then bring it down. And that's your downward dog prep. That will teach you how to integrate all of the locks together and that integration makes the seventh final lock and brings everything together into just a nice um, synergistic integrated system and if you practice those locks you can do any movement safely thanks for joining me